From Studio 1A in Tampa, Florida, comes a talk show that really feels your pain and tells you like it is. We love America and all that freedom-loving Americans want to protect. Live from coast to coast and on your radio, it's For the People with Keith Allen. We'll help you survive. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Keith Allen and proudly welcoming you to this Tuesday's edition of For the People on a November the 28th, 2017. Straight out of the headlines, I I can't make the stuff up. I mean, you if you want made up news, if you want fake news, you probably know where to go. I mean, CNN, MSNBC, ABC, all those left wing conspiratorial, you talk about the right-wing conspiracy that Hillary Clinton talked about in the 90s, the left-wing conspiracy is uh, found on those networks at any given time, that's for sure. But Hillary Clinton has made an announcement, and I have to break it here on For the People, if you haven't heard. She is vowing, she's made a vow to stay involved in politics, and her reason is that she is going to fight to make sure that President Donald Trump does not continue to undermine the country's values, (laughs) whatever that means to her, the country's values, as if she actually has values. Uh, The 2016 Democratic presidential nominee told the Washington Post Jonathan Capehart that in an interview published on Tuesday, speaking to Capehart in the latest episode of Cape up, Clinton called Trump a con artist and an equal opportunity bigot. Interesting. Uh, But anyway, she went on and what she's going to do, uh, she has threatened to be part of the resistance. And Keith Oberman, by the way, has been a part of this resistance movement, and he has announced his retirement officially this week. So no more Keith Oberman. He said he's out of politics. He, it's, it's No, there's nothing wrong with him, he says. No illness or anything like that. But So I don't know if that's inspired her to, 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 to do this because now there's an open platform of some kind that she'll be doing the resistance videos that he actually did with over 100 episodes. But uh, I'm thinking values today. Values. Uh, your values, my values. It's it's very interesting to hear from a leftist like Hillary Clinton pretend as if she knows what our values really are and what she really values the most. And to really get a full picture of who Rotten Clinton is, because that's her name, Hillary Rotten Clinton and Slick Willie, both of them were produced in Arkansas. That's where their careers took off. Now, some of you know the long litany of information and the trail of tears, if you will, that had been left behind because people from Arkansas, most people said good riddance. They didn't want anything to do with them. You see that sign when you go into Arkansas? Home of President Bill Clinton. I just, I want to vomit. I really want to vomit. From all the disgusting things that they have done, and for the life of me, how they have evaded prosecution for a lot of these things I'm going to remind you of how they've got away with it is beyond me. And the only thing that I can think of that has allowed them this power to to rise above it all, all of the things, is that they must have made some kind of secret pact with the devil. Um, Seriously, I mean, they're the most conniving 
politicians, lawyers, if you will, that have been able to use the system and seem like they just land on their feet every single time, even when one's broke and has no money because of all the scandals that us taxpayers ended up having to pay for. A friend of mine up in uh, Dover, New Hampshire, before Hillary Clinton was running for president, had to ask herself a couple questions. And she says, am I supposed to hate Hillary Rodham Clinton because she's too left wing or too right wing because she's too feminist or not feminist enough because she's too clever, a politician or too clumsy? What is it? Am I supposed to be mad that she gave speeches to rich bankers or that she charged them too much money? She goes on and says, I am up here in New Hampshire watching her talk to a group of supporters, and I realize that I have been following this woman's career for more than half my life, no, just my adult life, the whole shebang. She came out of the national scene when I was a young woman, and all of this time, there have been a defining chorus of critics telling me that she's just the most wicked, evil, nefarious individual in American history. She has a soul of an East German border guard. In the words of the nice Grover Norquist, she's a B-I-T-C-H. In the words of nice Newt Gingrich, she's a dragon lady. She's Elena Capasso. She's the lady... Machabeth of the little, <laughs> exactly, long before Benghazi, this, this, this one, this really gets me, long before Benghazi in her email server, there was Whitewater and the Rose Law Firm and Vince Falster, for those of us following her, we were promised scandal after scandal after scandal, and if no actual events ever turned up, well, that just proved how deviously clever she was. So today, I am performing a public service. To my voters, and to all the voters, rather, I want to back and reread all the criticisms and the attacks and the best-selling episodes leveled at Hillary Rodham Clinton over the past quarter century, and here is a list of them. Are you ready? Here we go. When she was first lady, she murdered White House lawyer Vince Foster and then dumped his body in a park. She drove Vince Foster to commit suicide through her temper tantrums. She was having an affair with Vince Foster. She's a lesbian. Chelsea isn't Bill Clinton's child. She murdered Vince Foster to cover up that she once brought a track of undeveloped land in Arkansas and lost money. She murdered Vince Foster to cover up her role in firing the White House Travel Department. After she murdered Vince Foster... She ransacked his office in the middle of the night and stole all the documents proving her guilt. When Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas, she was a partner in the state's top law firm and sometimes did work involving the state government. She once invested in commodities futures on the advice of a friend and made $100,000, proving she's a crook. She once invested in real estate on the advice of another friend and lost $100,000, also proving she's a crook. Unnamed and unverifiable sources have told Pe Peggy Noonan things about the Clintons that are simply too terrible to repeat. The personal uh, personnel rather murdered in Benghazi make her the first Secretary of State to lose overseas personnel to terrorism, apart from Condi Rice, Colin Powell, Madeleine Albright, George Schultz, and Dean Rusk, and some others. Four State Department staffers were murdered in Benghazi. Compared uh, with only 19, 119 other murders overseas under every Secretary of State combined since World War II. She legally sent classified emails from her personal server, except that apparently they weren't classified at the time. She may have cynically wriggled around the email law by technically complying with it. She once signed a lucrative book contract when she was a private citizen. Donald Trump says she should be in jail, and he's a serial bankrupt casino developer in Atlantic City, so he should know. Former House Majority Leader Tom DeLay says, and his law enforcement sources tell him, that she's 
about to be indicted. If a man once convicted of money laundering conspiracy doesn't have good law enforcement sources, who does? She's hard left radical who wants to break up the nuclear family. She's a conservative mouse wife who refused to break up her own family. She's in favor of single moms. She refused to be a single mom. When she was first lady of Arkansas, she pardoned two conservative voters by dyeing her hair. Before that, she totally insulted them by refusing to. She's, she's a frump. She spends too much money on designer dresses. She has cankles. She has a granking voice. She yells into the microphone. She spent 18 years in Arkansas and some other people who used to turn out to be crazy rednecks and crooks. She's in a pay of the media. She's in the pay of the Chinese government. She's in the pay of the Wall Street banks. In order to, to suppress the billing records from her time at the Rose Law Firm in Little Rock, she cleverly packed them up and took them to the White House rather than shredding them. When she handed over the documents to public officials, they couldn't find any evidence she committed any crime, so she must have doctored them. Congress spent tens of millions in six years investing her investments in the Whitewater real estate project, and while they didn't actually find anything, they wouldn't have spent all that money if there wasn't something there. By cleverly hiding all evidence of her crimes in Whitewater affair, she caused Congress to waste all that taxpayer money. When she ran for Senate of New York, she was still a fan of the Chicago Cubs. She once said that Clintons were thinking of adopting a child, and they didn't follow through. She was photographed holding her hand near her mouth during the raid that killed Osama bin Laden. She got brain damage. She's too old. She's really ambitious in calculating, unlike the other people running for president. She secretly supported Palestinian terrorists, Puerto Rican terrorists, and Guatemalan terrorists. She secretly supported a group that wants to give Maine back to the Indians. She's a secret follower of a radical prophet, Saul Salinsky. She did her degree at Yale and its well-known socialist finishing school. When she was young, she did things to build up her resume rather than just for her own good. When Bill was president, she allowed him to keep people waiting. She's married to a sex addict. She's an enemy of traditional marriage. She didn't divorce her husband. Her philandering is her fault because she's too strong and too weak and too frumpy and too fat and too cold. She's hostile to women who fool around with her husband. A divorced taxi driver in Florida told me that if Hillary is elected president, women will take over everything. She insulted Tammy Wynette. When they left the White House, she and Bill bought a big house in New York that they couldn't afford. She sometimes calls her staff during dinner, even when they're out at a restaurant. She claims there was a vast right-wing conspiracy against her husband, and it turned out there was nothing but a bunch of tycoons financing private investigators and some fake think tanks and books and news sites and stuff. When she got married, she didn't stay at home and bake cookies. She supported the Iraqi war because she's a secret foreign policy conservative. She's a secret foreign policy radical with a plan to impose worldwide radical social experimentation through the World Bank. She was secretly plotting to let children sue their parents for making them take out the garbage. She looked bored during the Benghazi hearings. Oh, yeah, and she totally has a vagina. It's clear Hillary must be stopped. <laughs> well, that's what you get up in uh, New Hampshire and Maine. Uh, folks, the, the people know who she is. These, this doesn't even begin to scratch the surface, but it really gives you a long list of things to chew on and to remember who she is. But, yeah, she's part of the resistance. She announced just yesterday that she's staying in politics because she wants to take out Trump because she wants to instill her values. These values that you just heard about, these particular values that she holds near and dear, and the values of today's left. Now, if you're a lefty, you may not have these particular values, and you may not support all these bad things that Hillary Clinton did, but this is the party with Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren 